Hey, what's going on guys? Arex here, welcome back to another video for Animal Crossing New Horizons. And today it is finally time. You guys have been asking me to show off my island, do a complete island tour, and that is exactly what we're doing. If you caught the other video that I did the other day, then you'll know that Hyrule is now officially a five star island. So uh, I got the golden watering can, and I guess it's now time to show you guys what I've done with this island. I'm super happy with how it's turned out. It's kind of like a um, sort of mix of themes. Largely speaking, it's sort of a Japanese themed island with a few other interesting kind of segments around it. So we're gonna walk around the whole thing and show you guys exactly what I've done. In fact, before we go any further, I'm gonna go and begin by opening up the map. This is basically my layout. One thing that I did do, you guys might have seen like early on, I had these sort of Japanese roads. Initially, I just laid them on the ground and then I discovered that custom paths don't actually lay down visible pathing on the map. So I then went and dug up all my roads laid down paths and then relayed the tarmac so that you didn't have that cool effect. Also, by the way, for any of you guys wondering, anything that I have in this video, any kind of custom pathing, I will link the creator codes down below so you can go and check those out. There's some pretty cool things in this that you guys will probably want to try out yourself. But anyway, this is my map. These are my villagers. I have uh, a few that I really like. So the top three are the best ones, Boone, uh, Flip, and of course, Rory. These are the jock type villagers. I'm basically trying to recruit with the Swole Boys. So gradually, I'm gonna be replacing some of the other ones. I got Cabo Frog recently from the Amiibo cards, but these are the villagers I have right now. Most of them are over on the far side of the uh, island, basically in this sort of neat Japanese suburban style setup. And then a couple of them, I ran out of space and also they were kind of weird. So I put them on the other side of the island, basically. So, we then jump out of there. We're gonna start by going over to the town. We're gonna to kind of do this in sort of like a interesting area sort of first. We're gonna start by the right side, look at the town, and then we're gonna go left clockwise around the island before we see absolutely everything and then end up back at my house. So this is the kind of main area. Of course, this is where the main plaza is. Everyone or everything is surrounded by these Zen walls to kind of give you this sort of Japanese street vibe. There's the tarmac laid everywhere with all of the markings. And of course, we have the signature vending machines. I mean, if you guys have been to Japan or you've seen Japan, vending machines are literally on every single corner. You basically can't go two seconds without seeing one. And they are pretty iconic. So I've got them listed around in various different places. I've got them up here as well. I've got them basically anywhere you can sort of see, you know, blank space. And I've also got these uh, utility poles because that's also kind of a signature thing in uh, in Japan. So that creates, or that kind of creates, should I say, creates, that's not even a word. That creates this sort of uh, Japanese style street look to it. Then down here we have basically anywhere that I've got road going onto the beach. I've put down these uh, wooden planks to kind of create this sort of boardwalk style like pre-breach, pre-breach, pre-beach walking area. Of course we have more uh, vending machines here. Got a scooter here, implying that someone's kind of scooted all the way down to the beach. Left it there, gone to the beach to do uh, whatever they want. There's not actually a great deal on my beaches to be fair. I've kind of thrown down some chairs so you can chill out. There's uh, a hammock a little further over here. And there's some, uh, you know, some balls and some tea sets and stuff. So whatever, the beach is what it is, but it's there for people that want to uh, chill out. But then if we go over here, you can see that this is basically how I have set up my houses. They don't have gardens or anything. They basically have this very sort of tight setup. Again, you know, very much like it would be in sort of suburban Japanese setups, lots of houses quite close together. But I do sort of like, you know, adding in the walls, like houses this close together normally might look a bit odd, but when you add in the nice little sort of neat walls, it creates this cool look to it. And the way that they all back onto each other, you have these little sort of back roads. They all again lead onto the beach. At one point I kind of did close it off. So they all were sort of created these alleyways, but I thought it's kind of nice to have the foot traffic going through. So again, someone's got their washing out there. There's some sort of seats here if you want to stare and look out onto the rocks because that's some nice scenery. We then have up here another house right next to the shop. So this is, uh, you know, sort of our semi-shopping district. Of course, it goes uh, right next to the town center. So you have your zebra crossing. Always look left and right before you cross the road, just in case. And you then go over here, and this is where we have the shop. After that, we then have what I have tentatively called Swole Street. I've basically put all my jock villagers up at the top. They, uh, You'll notice they do have an ever so slightly larger front porch. I've basically kind of, you know, given them priority treatment. In truth, I actually just spaced it out wrong. So then these houses had slightly more space at the front. These ones didn't. But you know what? It's fine. They're my favorite. So they basically get a little kind of like iconic item at the front. So this guy's got a wrestling figure. This guy has got, you know, a plant. This guy's also got a plant. Nothing crazy. But yeah, this is Swole Street. These are 
the uh, jock villagers and of course that then goes on to the nook shop we have a couple of things outside we've got a trash can another utility pole given that it's sort of you know like a shop they're taking deliveries i've got a little box out here that's the kind of aesthetic i'm going for and then anytime there's sort of some blank space we have plenty of bamboo trees now we're not going to go up this alleyway because this is where we're going to end the tour so we're going to go on the uh the kind of like you know circular tour around the island but over here just quickly on this side of the island we have uh you know, a little fire over here, some stools to sit on, some flowers, a little pond for people that want to go fishing. Look at Boone over there. This guy, this is the best guy. Look, look, meet Boone. He is my favorite villager. He's a baboon. He's super swole, always talking about working out. It's great. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good time. So yeah, anyway, that is primarily the town. So we now go and run back here. We're going to run over and we're going to take a look at where the other two villagers live. And then we're going to start seeing the wider part of the island. In fact, actually, let's go this way because you then get to see the symbol for the village. Got the, my one solitary golden rose, which is hidden on a special island so that uh, nobody can pick it. Nobody can, uh, you know, take it away. If someone comes to visit, that is safe. That is uh, protected. So, yeah, that's over there. Another little sort of beach area down here. If you guys that want to... Uh... Oh, hello, Gulliver. What are you doing there? Uh, I'll come back and see him later. But uh, he's, uh, he's clearly got lost. Obviously, we've also got some nice little manhole covers down there just to kind of add to that road feel. This is where one of the odd villages is, so he's uh, down here on his own. And we then have this nice little sort of walkway through the park. Admittedly, putting these fences here, it looks nice and neat, but then any time there are bugs that spawn on the flowers, it means I have to take them down. So maybe I should adjust that. But either way, it looks kind of cool, so I'm keeping it for another time being. Oh, there's some weeds in there in the background. I need to go and do some weeding. This is the problem. I've created all these walled off areas to make things look nice, and I'm happy with it, but it also, uh, in fact, you know what? We're going to do this right now because this is going to bother me. We're gonna, we just need to we just need to get rid of some of the weeds because this is a five star village. We don't have weeds on this here village. What on earth is going on? All right, let's go back. Anyway, back on the tour. So this is the other one. This is Beardo. He's a uh, Beardo the Weirdo. I mean, the fact that he's got he's got beard in his name it massively upsets me that he's a really weird villager. Anyway, sorry, I digress. We've got these little sort of stalls over here as well with the, uh, you know, you can customize the stalls. So I've changed them to black with the uh, little kind of Japanese wave style thing. So it fits the theme of the village. It's got a coffee machine over here. So if you want some coffee on the way and you can then, in fact, you can actually uh, interact with that and actually pour some coffee, which is kind of cool. So now if we go over here, this is our first bridge. This goes over to our orchard. This is where we have all the fruit trees. Now I've kind of put them onto different elevations. So you can see we have the cherry trees, the orange trees, the uh, pears and the apples. And then you can go up the slope and we've got some more oranges, some peaches over here. Have a little place where you can sit down if you want to uh, look out at the sea. Interestingly, these, these flowers have started popping up all over my village. I'm not actually too sure what they are. In fact, you know what? Since I've got so many of them now, we're going to... Wait, I can't even... Hang on a minute. I don't know what they are. And at first I didn't want to pick them because I was like, well, what if they're special? But we're going to find out what it is because I have only just seen them start popping up. Maybe they are... Maybe they sell for loads. Lily of the Valley? Hmm, Interesting. Okay, anyway, moving on from there, before we go up the uh, next ramp, we're going to go down here towards where the beach is. This is uh, admittedly the kind of slightly more random side of my village. I've kind of put a few things down here that will probably be replaced later on. This was initially to kind of meet the, the five-star quota, so to speak, but there is Stonehenge up here. Put it sort of on the stones so that it looks more like it kind of belongs there. This is sort of, I don't know, where people go out here to do weird magical rituals or something of that ilk. And if we run down here, have a camping bed if someone wants to sleep there. I wouldn't recommend that. If the tide comes in, you're uh, you're going to end up like Gulliver. We've got a little sort of uh, campfire there. We've got some construction sites over here because there's still some stuff being built. But we do have plenty of flowers around here. Little paddling pool right by the sea because in case you are scared of the sea. And we then have flowers over here. So that's uh, this part of the island. But if we then start moving towards the museum... We then have another elevation, Rory, another swole boy out here. So he's, uh, he calls me Vitamin A, which is great. I love it. He's, uh, he's got the best nickname for me. And this is where we find more cherry trees, a few more pears over here. However, before we go up here, there is one little secret area around here. And it's kind of, uh, you know, the raccoon is the guardian of the secret area. Admittedly, I was going to put a ramp here, but I hit my ramp quota. I've got eight different ramps in this, uh, in this village. So I actually just have to use this as a secret area. But basically there's the, uh, the wind fish the sacred fish over here and he basically protects the waterfall there is a fake rock two legitimate rocks and a place here for you just to sit back if you want to do some uh, some fishing since you know my actual housing area is fully walled off if i want to do some fishing 
and come down here to the secret area. So that's uh, that's that. But if we then move over here, we're gonna go up towards the museum. Now this part is is one of my favorite parts. You see over here, we have an archeological dig site. We down here have, uh, in fact, nobody ever gets to go down here. It's off limits because I don't want people to disturb disturb the uh, the fossils that have been dug up. But you'll see that there is, there's a nice little sort of custom path down here that's laid down to look like we've been digging up a fossil. We've got a wheelbarrow, a spade there, a ladder, some amber. So this is basically, I mean, I shouldn't be doing this. That's, uh, I'm walking all over genuine history right now. But this is my archeological dig site, conveniently outside where the museum is. I figured it's kind of fitting because, you know, obviously that's what the museum is there for. So uh, that's basically what this is for. Plenty of flowers around here as well to essentially, like I basically went overboard with flowers. When she was like, when Isabel was like, hey, you need some more flowers. I just went and planted hundreds. This is also eventually ideally going to be a T-Rex because I have the T-Rex tail. I don't have the body in the head. So currently I have this weird scientific amalgamation of whatever fossils I have. Eventually this will be T-Rex body, T-Rex head. Uh, but for now, it is a weird creature. This is also where I display my fake art that, uh, uh, what's his name? Red has sold me. And uh, I figured, you know what, I've paid money for it. We're gonna put it on display, Gulliver won't have it, but I'm gonna put it outside his museum because then he can't say anything. So uh, yeah, I'll deliver some fossils to him later on as well because, you know, he's uh, clearly wants his fossils. Anyway, moving on from there, we're then gonna go up here to the sort of seating area up here. We basically have a couple of little sort of seats if you wanna look out over onto the ocean. Look down at Stonehenge, and you've then got some benches and whatnot. And of course, this is where I took all the new hedges that leaf cells and just kind of put them on display. Now from here, before we go around the main path, you can go down here to another fishing area where there's another stall. You can see Godzilla over there. Can't get to him, he's on his own special island. But this is another place for you to go and do some fishing. And then after that, we have another rock up here. And if we go then around this corner, nothing really special around here, just some flowers. Again, a few placeholder items that will likely be replaced a little bit later on. But if we go further down here, this place is largely speaking just flowers and trees. Uh, there was a sleeping bag here. Somebody, oh, you can lie on top of it. Ha! Huh. Somebody uh, clearly went to sleep on there and fell in the river, never saw them again. But we then go over this way and we have more places for people to fish. Nice little sort of snaking path. And this brings us towards the uh, first, or technically speaking second, Zen Garden. So this is a really nice custom path. Of course, have little sort of stones over here, have some bamboo on the side, and this is my nice little chill Zen Garden. Now from there, we can then go down here to uh, the little forest, which has got some of these panda bears hiding in the middle of it. We then have nothing really exciting up on the right hand side of the beach. We can go over here to where the campsite is. Now, I recently, this is a very recent addition. I did put a little shortcut in here because I wanted to get to the campsite quickly. So you can actually go here and shortcut into my house. That is technically speaking a weakness in the defense now because I've basically got walls all around my village, all around my village, my house. But alas, I wanted to do that for uh, sheer convenience. From here, we then get to the alleyway that comes back to the town. On the right hand side, we have a little sort of playground. So uh, if the kids want to kind of come out and just hang around the slides or whatever, they can do that. And on the left side, for the Swole Boys, we have the outdoor gym. So this is where people can come out here to uh, to work out. We have kettlebells, we have a bench, we have, of course, a barbell for deadlifts, a tire, pull-up bar, a little sort of uh, punching bag, and of course, exercise ball and a climbing wall. So this is where you go to, uh, to work out. Admittedly, I haven't actually ever seen them here, but I built it for them especially. Now the vending machine, and now we're back into the town. So from here, we can now go around and go to the central island, which is the whole reason I chose this island in the first place. If I go back to the very first day I played Animal Crossing, I chose this island because it had a central little sort of landmass, which I was gonna turn into an island, and that's exactly what I did. Walls all the way around, so it's like a little sort of castle, nobody can get in. We have a nice zen garden that kind of takes me all the way up to my house. We have a little sort of like mini island over here for uh, some bamboo trees. We have another island over here with uh, this fun little crazy thing. More bamboo trees. Basically, I filled up all of the spaces with bamboo. I have a uh, nice little bath over here. Oh no, more weeds, are you serious? This is a slight structural kind of problem here because you can't actually pole vault this tiny gap. So um, I'll sort that out later. Pretend you didn't see it. And then over here, I have some more bamboo trees and that's pretty much it for the island tour. Now I will show you my house, I'll admit, I spent so long building my island that not all of my house is done. 
We'll go in and I'll show you a few rooms, but the house is kind of a work in progress. So maybe in the future, I may do a second video where I show you more because I may be kind of redoing the island at some point. But you go in and, you know, I mean, if you guys know me, you know I'm all about this fitness and lifting life, right? So I don't need a conventional house. I don't need a living room, an entry hall, a galley or anything like that. I go straight into the gym. Two benches, a punch bag, two barbells, pull up rack, some Jordans, plenty of protein powder, a locker, and of course kettlebells. So this is where you come for the uh, for the legitimate workouts. Of course, we also have cardio room in the back. Who likes cardio? Not me. This is why I put it in the back room. But for those of you guys that uh, want to do some cardio, got a couple of bikes, treadmill, another climbing wall inside my house, a little way of kind of measuring my height, and uh, and that. So that's basically my uh, my little sort of cardio room. And then from there, we also have the the kind of bedroom at the top. The left and right rooms were basically my workshop rooms at the moment, so I just use them to dump things in, so you don't get to see them right now. There's nothing exciting in here. This will be my japanese themed bedroom once I have stuff, but right now I just sleep on the mats because I have no money. Uh, I mean, that's not actually true, but let's pretend that's true because it fits the narrative of my room being empty. And then finally, go down to the basement, which again is also not complete because I need to fill it up, but this is basically going to become my games room, my arcade. So we have arcade machines down here. We have our little server. We have uh, you know, our, our kind of chair and our LCD screen. So there will be more stuff down here. Left my switch on the floor. Um, this is going to become my games room, but admittedly not that exciting right now. But thankfully, my five star rating is not based on the interior house. It's based on the island. And that is what you guys came to see. So. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. That's a look at my five star island. That is my uh, sort of Japanese themed town. I'm thinking I might, now you guys have seen this, if you guys are interested in this kind of stuff, I am thinking of maybe doing a completely new town, reworking everything, even though I've just finished this one, maybe I'll change it. Who knows, could build something else really cool. So if you guys would like to see a completely different theme, then uh, put some suggestions down below. What do you think I should do? I could build something completely new. But either way, for the time being, that's it. That's a tour of my village. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember, if you liked any of the QR codes or the custom paths, I will link the creator codes down below. You put in that creator code and you can then go and see all their stuff. And hopefully that helps. But for the time being, thanks for watching. and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you haven't already done so, you can join the Arax Gaming Discord. We've got an awesome community over there with so many different channels for you to chat loads of different topics and different games. I'm in there, the team's in there. If you guys wanna chat with us, find people to play with, it's just in general a great place to be. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of our future uploads.